Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, last week we made uh, a cherry vase with a texturing down the side, which is using a technique I haven't really tried before. Now that has given me so many thousands of ideas to do. Uh, and as we're coming up to the holiday period, I decided to make a celebration bowl using some of those techniques and an awful lot more of the colors I have just ordered. Now this is a big piece of tulip. Uh, it's not the most exciting wood in the world, so it's gonna be uh, a wonderful base for us to do wonderful, colorful things on it. So I think first job is to get this mounted. I think I'm gonna use a, a worm screw on this. We'll get it mounted and we shall get started. Okay, we're on the lathe, we're all set up. Uh, initially, we're gonna be start turning at around 700 RPM. It's pretty well balanced, so that shouldn't be a problem. Now, I've just suddenly realized that I've mounted this the wrong way up. Because of this uh, area here, <laughs> I really wanted that on the bottom, but I wasn't paying attention. So I'm gonna have to slightly change the idea of, I had in terms of shape, so we're not having to take this all back. So what we're going to be doing is a pattern which is going to be predominantly on the side walls. Now initially I wanted this flat, but now I've got this area, I'm going to have to do a curved pattern which will then gradually fade into the bottom. Now it's going to be quite a large size bowl this, I think it's nearly 12 inches across. So initially we'll just get it flattened off, get it all square and then start creating a shape. Okay, so that's it all nicely squared off. Now, like I mentioned at the start, I really wanted this to be on the bottom because I did want a flat side. So what I've decided to do is to take, uh, we're still gonna have a flat side, but the side is gonna be angled. So in other words, it is gonna be a flat surface, but as opposed to being flat that way, it's gonna be flat that way, angled slightly towards the internal bowl area. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to create that flat side and then create a foot. Uh, we're just going to lift the bottom of the bowl or the side of the bowl off the, the floor and create a foot around that area. So it looks like it's a little bit like it's floating. Okay, to make this angle, what I'm going to do is slightly turn the tool rest inwards and I'm going to run the tool along this angle and that will slowly start to create the shape I want on the top. Excellent. Right, let's create this foot. Okay, so we've got two lines here. Inside that area is going to be the tenon, and this gap between these two is going to be the main foot of the piece.
I'll set up for sanding. I'll let you watch a bit of it, and I shall bring you back when it's time for the fun bit. Okay, that's a pretty good surface now. I had to put a bit of sanding sealer uh, halfway through on the end grain because it was uh, proving a little bit problematic, but it should be okay now. Now, I don't want to put a colour directly onto this, so I'm just going to put on uh, a watered down shellac sealer just to give us a nice kind of uh, even surface, just protect the surface a little bit before the dye goes on. We can class this a bit like a pre-stain, a pre -stain, if you like. Don't start getting emotional about the wood, you're not going to see it. You will inside the bowl, but uh, not on the sides and the bottom. I'll give that a little bit of time to dry and I'll just quickly cut it back with an abrasive pad and then we'll start putting the base coat on. Right, I know I just said don't get emotional about the grain on the bottom but I've just got emotional about the grain on the bottom so I'm not going to colour the base at all, I'm just going to leave it but I am going to colour the sides because that's the whole point of the video. Now. I bought an awful lot more of these oh, gilding polishes, uh, lots of different colours and I want to have some fun with this but a nice, I need a nice base colour to go over so I've got this nice dark grey and we're going to cover this outside completely All the way around. We're going to take a couple of coats, but it does dry fairly quickly. Any I get on the base, I can sand off later. let this dry for a few minutes and I'll put on as many coats as it need as it needs so you can't see the wood underneath and I shall bring you back when that's done okay this is plenty of time to dry so now what I'm going to do I'm going to mark out an area on here where I'm going to uh, to be putting the pattern in now I've got this really, really thin tape about a year ago thinking I was going to use it for another project which didn't come off or didn't happen so I'm hoping this is going to be thin enough for me able to help to, well, to help create a nice straight wavy line straight wavy line <laughs> it's going to help me create a nice line around this bowl that I can use cutting. It's a lot easier to get curves this way rather than trying to hand draw them. Don't think that looks too bad. Right, let me get some normal tape now and put this on at the, this, on the top side. to help protect the piece. Okay, I'm just about ready and set up for creating this pattern. 
Now I'm going with a, a diamond tip burr this time rather than the, the cut sole because uh, I think it'll do a slightly finer job on this surface. We are going to be sanding afterwards, but uh, it'll hopefully cut down that process a little bit. Right, so as usual, safety precautions. I've got safety goggles on. I'll be wearing a mask and I'll be turning on the extractor as well. So, right, let's get started. that took a while. Quite happy with the result though. That was quite nice. In a very self-indulgent moment I uh, assigned it. Right, I'm gonna go and get my little sanding bits. I'll quickly give this a good dusting over the top. Okay, this is the, the sanding wheel I'm gonna use. This is apparently about 280 grit, so I'll just give it a light dusting over with this. Okay, it's time to start putting a bit of colour on. Now initially when I decided to do like a Christmas bowl, celebration bowl, whatever you want to call it, uh, I was going to put great big uh, bauble sized circles on the side and turn it into a very kind of obvious Christmas bowl. But I want this to be used all year round. So it is going to be interesting in the very variety of colours we're going to use, but it's not going to be so uh, in your face, well, it might be. Well, it's not going to be so <laughs> ridiculously over the top that you can't use it all the year round. So I think first step, it does sound like a bit like repeating myself. I'm going to put a little bit of black over these edges here, just to try and uh, feather it into the colour that we're going for in the main bit. I think. The great thing is this: I can keep on going over the top and over the top until. I get something I'm happy with, but I've got a feeling that having black around the edge will stop having like a hard line between the colour and the, the black silver on the outside. I think I'm going to use a brush for this bit so I can get into all the, the delves. Excellent. Right, I'm going to keep this brush with this pot. Where's the lid? There it is. I'm going to keep this brush with this pot in case we need to come back to that. Okay, now to start the colour. Now we've got one, two, three deeper areas. So I think I'm going to use a mix of three colours. Now, do we go purple, green, and Whatever that is, 
Goldie, bronze. What else have we got? Kind of bluey, a very, very light sky blue, pearl. No idea what color that is. Blue. A different pearl. And a hot pink. I'm not quite in the mood for a hot pink. But I'm definitely in the mood for a bit of purple. Quite like that. And the green. I think that's what I chose with initially. Right. If these look absolutely awful, then I can change it. That's not a problem. Right, so let's try this uh, this purple first of all. If I get some of the bottom, it doesn't matter. I'm going to sand that at the end. Next colour. Okay, I'll keep brush that brush with that pot. I'm not sure about that colour. Okay, bronze. Okay, I am going to go back to this colour. I think it'll sit nicely between the the bronze and the the purple. If you would choose something else, please feel happy to ridicule my decision and leave your choice in the comments below. further in. Okay. Okay. Right, we're not quite done yet. I need, what I think I need is to bring some of this black a little bit over the top of the base colour. So I'm just going to take the very, very smallest amount of the black that we've got on the brush and just, I'm not stippling it, I'm just taking it over the top and that should hopefully only cover high points. whole thing. That'll help give it a bit of depth and not look so flat. There's no stippling going on, it's just purely over the high points. Okay. Give it a couple of seconds just to sit and dry, and then we'll take the tape off. Okay, it's time to take it off. I'm nervous.
Okay. That looks pretty good. It's subtle, it's not too in your face. I've got a little bit of uh, the ready color over the top of the black there. So I'm just gonna get my black brush and just stipple out that. Okay, I like it. Okay, now the finish we're putting on is a, a polyacrylic by Minwax. And it's a water-based polyurethane finish. We're gonna be applying it with a brush so we can get into all the, the little delves on here. Now we don't need an awful lot, very, very thin coat to start off with. I'm gonna let that dry for a few hours, cut it back with a, a very high grade uh, abrasive pad and then apply another coat. Probably end up applying two or three coats but you don't have to stick around for all of them. We'll just put one one coat and then we'll uh, I'll bring it back when that's done. Now it does have a milky colour but that's fairly normal with water brace to water-based acrylics, so don't worry too much about that. Okay, I'll work on the next few coats of this, and I shall bring it back when it's time to turn it round and hollow it out. Okay, we're all ready to start hollowing this out. Uh, clear stock, obviously, at the start for safety. Uh, now we've got a bit of, uh, of this lip to take down first, so I'll do a few passes across and then we'll start hollowing out. the problems. Yep, right, holding out. on the base, a little bit deeper. I'm gonna whittle away at this a bit more and then I'll take the tail stuck away so we can get these sides slightly steeper. undercut going that matches the shape of the outside of the bowl I'm just gonna make sure I'm not going too shallow we've still got plenty of room on the base which is good so I'll take this a little bit further and then we can start sanding
Okay, I just went in there with a, a 3 8 inch gouge just to help me make this angle here. It's going to need, still need a bit of cleaning up with a scraper, which I'll do now. But then I think we're about ready for sanding. Now I've got it. Right, I shall set up for sanding. I'll let you watch a bit of it. And I shall bring you back when it's done. Sanding went beautifully. I'm going to quickly tidy up and we shall start putting the finish on this. About to put on the final finish. I've done a quick tidy round to make sure there's a little dust in the atmosphere as possible. The howling gale that we've had in the village for the last few days has calmed down, so that's good. Right, now this is just a, a shellac sealer which I'm putting on at the start. I've got a couple of coats of this and then I'll cut it back with an abrasive paste. I want to try and keep this, the inside of this food safe. So I'm not quite sure what it's going to hold. Right, I'll let this one dry, put on another one, and I'll bring it back and we'll cut it back with an abrasive paste. Okay, let's have plenty of time to dry. So now for the abrasive paste, I'm going on with uh, True Grit abrasive paste. Buff this straight in, starting off at the slow speed and then building it up. Clean this off with just some isopropyl. Well, I'll give this a chance to evaporate and then put on the final finish. Okay, the final finish is going to be the shine juice again. So we're putting on some normal full strength shellac. And because I'm wanting to keep this food safe, I'm using a raw linseed oil to mix with it. About 50% of each. Make sure that's well mixed. And apply this liberally with a cloth, with a cloth, and then rub it in as the lathe is spinning. Give me this two or three coats of this. Okay. Right, I'll apply a few more coats and I shall bring it back and we shall take a look at what we've done. There we go. A 12 inch tulip bowl with an intricate design on the side and coloured with gilding polish. This was a lot of fun. Putting this pattern in took an awful lot of time, but I'm really pleased with the way it came out. I think I maybe should have been a little bit bolder with the colour choices, but uh, well, I think it's okay. It's not too in your face that, you know, you would only use it at Christmas or something like that. I think this would be okay in a kind of very modern style house all the year round. I enjoyed it. Right, I'm going to be doing some more of these in the future. I've got a few other projects I want to do first, but we will be returning to this in the new year.
Anyway, if you've enjoyed this one, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe and all that kind of thing. And if you could share it as well, then that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, but if you do leave a comment, then you are going to be entered when we next do a giveaway. I'm not quite sure what that's going to be yet. We're definitely going to do a huge one when we get to our second anniversary, which is on the 16th of March. Whether or not we get to do one before then, I'm not quite sure, but uh, one will always be on the horizon, so it is worthwhile just putting a comment in there, just in case. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I shall see you next time. Thank you.